Disney. I have no idea. But, um, you know, Bobby's going to do whatever he... It seems like Bobby's out of the picture, right? And this is what I said before uh, about Bobby here is that um, we'll look at the Activision Blizzard stock uh, actually right now. Let's see. Yeah, so it was at 65 and now it's at 86. So uh, this was a huge fucking jump. When when did it go down a whole lot? I forgot, like, which, which, uh, which controversy was this? I, I don't remember. Yeah, wh which controversy was this? Was it the milk controversy? The Bobby controversy, the Wall Street Journal. No, I feel like that happened. Like, that's November. Regardless, it's gone up a huge amount. So uh, in terms of the perspective of investors, this is a good thing. Upon close, we'll offer, as many, uh, we'll offer as many Activision Blizzard games as we can within Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass, both new titles and games from Activision Blizzard's incredible catalog. We also announced today that Game Pass has more than 25 million subscribers. Holy shit! That's a lot of fucking people. God damn. And also, like, as far as I know, uh, Microsoft, like, Halo Infinite, I haven't really had a chance to play it. I don't know really why I haven't played it, but I just haven't played Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is a W, right? Like, everything that I've heard about the game has been positive. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's a W. Like, so, Microsoft has unironically had a pretty good job. I mean, they've been doing a pretty good job. At the broadest level, our mission at Microsoft Gaming is to extend the joy and community of gaming to everyone on the planet. Billions of people. And this deal accelerates that strategy. Yeah, it sure does. When this transaction closes, Microsoft Gaming will be the world's number three gaming company by revenue behind Tencent and Sony. Wow. We believe that Microsoft and our team are uniquely positioned with the technical capability, financial capacity, creative vision, and the gaming track record required to deliver a truly global interactive entertainment ecosystem. With this transaction, Activision Blizzard brings into Microsoft Gaming one of the most exciting collections of content franchises, a lot of games. creative teams, and fan bases anywhere in global entertainment across any form of media. Many Activision Blizzard properties, including at King, are truly beloved by yeah. people all over the world, and they will endure for many decades to come. I'll read people forget about King and how influential and big they are. Uh, I think that you only really see it whenever you look at, like, the Activision Blizzard, like, the quarterly reports that, like, you'll see on, on like, Wowhead or whatever. But King just makes, like, a ridiculously huge amount of money. Force. That this is not about short-term results. Yeah. We have seen Activision Blizzard's product roadmap and are incredibly enthusiastic about what the teams are creating and the company's pipeline over many years to come. Well, I hope so. We have seen strong recent performance from our existing ZeniMax and Xbox Game Studios. Because, like, really, I mean, I think what they're talking about, like, that's not really a cap, though. Like, I mean, is that really a cap whenever you're talking about Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4? Nah, bro, like, even if Diablo 4 sucks and Overwatch 2 sucks, they're going to make billions of dollars. Like, I mean, they're, they're going to make billions of dollars off of these games. Like, guaranteed, man. Like, especially Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4. Like, people have wanted Diablo. Remember, like, remember how big Diablo 3 was whenever it came out? It was the game, man. It was the fucking game. And Diablo 4 is going to be massive as well. Studios and are well positioned as the stewards of Activision Blizzard's great franchises. I'm glad I'm to use that I'm personally excited for the opportunity to work directly with the dedicated, passionate teams, Call of Duty, Blizzard, King, and each of the studios across the company as we reach new heights and even more players together. Yep. We're all about putting players at the center of everything we do. And this transaction is going to be fantastic, not only for our existing players, but will also help us bring innovative experiences to vast new audiences. That's because adding the Activision Blizzard portfolio to our existing operations will also propel our new forms of distribution and monetization like cloud gaming and our Game Pass subscription service. That's what they really want to sell. Each of these services are helping us reach new audiences, especially as we expand into new geographic markets in mobile first economies. Upon close, we will offer as many Activision Blizzard games as we can within Game Pass. Yeah, I just really hope that includes WoW. I really hope it includes WoW. That's the main fucking thing. Because, like, that's the only other one you pay monthly for. And, yeah, they bought the company for almost $69 billion. Honestly, I, I would have expected it to be more. But I guess with so many... <laughs> 
with so many situations recently, uh, that's not the case. So yeah, WoW's worth the same as full Game Pass. That's the thing is like I just like maybe you pay five dollars more for like WoW. I, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like you guaranteed add in millions of people to the Xbox Game Pass. It's kind of like the same thing with like Twitch Prime and like Amazon Prime, right? But what they want to do with the Xbox Game Pass is they want to have as many games as possible on the Xbox Game Pass. And the reason for that is because it gets people playing and paying for it longer. It's in Activision, or sorry, in Microsoft's best interest to have as many good games as possible on the Game Pass because that's what they sell people on. And if they bring out a new game with a bunch of microtransactions, they put that on the front page of the Game Pass, and then they get people that are like, what the fuck is this? They try out the game, and then maybe some of them buy a microtransaction. Um, also, it's monthly income. It's, it's guaranteed revenue. Like, you have 25 million people on the Game Pass. That's 25 million times 15. That's a lot of fucking money, man. So, antitrust? I don't think it's going to be an antitrust situation. I, I, I don't think so. I know people are bringing that up, but, like, when was the last time that an antitrust law really got enacted on a huge company? Uh, it's very uncommon. And I think that, like, Microsoft probably wouldn't have gone into this. Uh, AT&T? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, too. It was a long, that's a long fucking time ago, man. Uh, Microsoft probably wouldn't have gone into this without extensively researching whether that's something that's going to happen or not. And they probably even talked to the uh, the government before it ahead of time. Because like you have to think, like, are you, like, imagine you are Microsoft. You clearly know people in, in the government. Wouldn't you want to talk to them about the possibility for this before you just go into it? Of course you would. So the odds are they probably um, uh, they probably did this and the government knows about it and they don't really give a shit. Uh, we announced today Game Pass has more than 25 million subscribers. As always, we look forward to continuing and adding more value uh, and more great games to the Game Pass. The fantastic franchises across Activision Blizzard will also uh, accelerate our plans for cloud gaming, allowing more people in more places around the world to participate in the Xbox community using phones, tablets, laptops, and other devices you already own. Now, I think the idea of cloud gaming, uh, cloud gaming sounds really cool. Uh, right now, I feel like the technology is a little bit farther behind people's, uh, people's aspirations, uh, behind people's goals. Like, it's really cool idea, but it's just not really quite there yet in terms of, like, responsiveness and uh, just, the, like, feeling seamless to actually owning the game yourself. It's laggy. Yeah, it's laggy. So I think cloud gaming in the future will be something really cool and uh, it'll be good uh, for a lot of people, especially people that don't really have the ability to buy a lot of expensive games or have an expensive uh, gaming PC or maybe a brand new Xbox. Uh, they'll have that. So, yeah, I mean, one day cloud gaming will be good, but I do think that people are reaching a little bit too high right now for it. And it hasn't really the technology hasn't caught up to what people want it to be yet. Uh, anyway, so um, let's look at this here. Uh, laptop devices you already own. Uh, Activision Blizzard games are enjoyed on a variety of platforms, and we plan to continue to support those communities moving forward. As a company, Microsoft is committed to our journey to, for inclusion in every aspect of gaming, both among employees and players, deeply value individual studio cultures. We also believe that creative success and autonomy go hand in hand with treating every person with dignity and respect. We hold all teams, all leaders to this commitment. We're looking to extending our culture of proactive inclusion to the great teams across Activision Blizzard. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, this is really good to hear is like the creative success and autonomy. Because, like, why would Microsoft, like, you think about this logically, right? Why would Microsoft want to buy a company and then just tell them what they're going to do now? Like, they're basically buying a cookie clicker farm. They want to buy something that they don't have to spend a lot of time dealing with, and it just makes them money. So, yeah, it, it, like, logically, this is probably true because it would be following the path of least resistance. 
So, yeah, I think this is probably actually true. It's just corporate speech. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll have expectations. It's the same as Activision had on Blizzard, right? I mean, like, this is no, this is, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. There's going to be the same bullshit, right? Unless Blizzard is completely autonomous, the difference between them being owned and controlled primarily by Activision or owned and controlled primarily by Microsoft, this is, you know, six and a half dozen. Right. It's the same fucking thing, uh, in my opinion. So let's see here around the world. No more exciting venue uh, for fun and connection and video games. Uh, and there's never been a better time to play than right now. Uh, extend to join our community. Look forward to welcoming all of our friends at Activision Blizzard to Microsoft Gaming. Well, great. I mean, that's that's fucking awesome. I'm happy about this. Could be the end of Battle.net if everything goes to Xbox. No, I don't think that they would want to do that because um the Battle.net has like its own, uh, it has its own like brand value. So like, why would they want to change things and move everything under Xbox if Battle.net has its own brand value? It doesn't really seem like it would be a good idea because like, do you remember before, um, didn't they try to rename Battle.net? I, I, I'm trying to remember like, what did they call it? They tried to rename it for a little while. What, what were they trying to call it before? The Blizzard app. Yeah, with, uh, Bobby Net. Yeah. Yeah, the Blizzard app. Yeah, the Blizzard launcher. And people just liked calling it Battle.net. And Blizzard finally gave up and they said, okay, fine, it's fucking Battle.net. So, yeah, I mean, if you had to go on the, uh, it, like, if the difference here is that now instead of uh, going on Battle.net, the Blizzard launcher, uh, instead of that, I'm going to have to go onto the Xbox games launcher. I don't really give a fuck that much. Uh, I would prefer not to, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, as somebody who's used the Blizzard Battle.net launcher ever since Warcraft 3, uh, I'd like to stick with Battle.net, and I'd like to be able to have the old launcher and uh, maybe just have them added in to, uh, to this thing on the top. But it depends, right? And, I mean, obviously the Game Pass is something that has, like, a lot of value to Xbox, and they might want to consolidate it in order to create the highest perceived value of the Game Pass to people that might be subscribers to Blizzard or Activision games. So it makes sense if they want to, uh, you know, condense everything into one app. But personally, I'd like to keep the Battle.net app because it's just what I've always had. And um, on top of that, I think that this is a uh, it's certainly going to shake things up. And I think that a lot of the big questions that people have with this, and we'll talk about Bobby leaving uh, Activision in just a little bit, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about how this is going to affect the games and where I see this going. In general, I think that this can't really... I, like, I, I almost don't want to say this, right? It's like a knock-on-wood situation. Is It would be very difficult for this to make things worse, Okay. Blizzard Activision has been in the shitter for years, and this is clearly a nuclear solution to being in the shitter for years. They're being bought by fucking Microsoft. So is this going to change things up? Is it going to completely, you know, like now, okay, Microsoft is owning things and Phil is going to make them make the game good now. He's going to just fucking, you know, like Titan forging was gone. Uh, you know, he's going to get rid of like this multiple difficulty bullshit. Like we're not going to, we're going to have progressive rating again. We're going to have a like, classic plus, you know, Phil's just going to help us out. Like, is this really what's going to happen? Probably not. Right. But I do think that this is really what my perspective have like Activision influence on blizzard games and, and everything like that this has always been like my perspective on it is that they don't have like a direct influence where they say you need to make titan forging you need to make uh pvp scaling you need to make you know the raid gear get invalidated every six months or something right it's not like the board of directors is going to the blizzard designers and telling them that what happens really is that activision and uh, the board of directors that, that was primarily activision people they create expectations that then blizzard has to do things that are player unfriendly to meet so that's what the worst thing is, is that there are, are expectations that are put on Blizzard that then cause them to feel like they have to use certain types of retention mechanics to keep people engaged longer. So it's not like a A equals B, A causes B situation. It's an A causes B that causes C, right? So you have like one degree of removal. So they're not causing it directly, but they're causing it indirectly by the goals that they require Blizzard to meet. 
So that's what I think is going to happen. Now, with Xbox owning them and, you know, Microsoft, is this going to change? No, it's not. Uh, I don't think that it will. The only thing that we can hope for is that the expectations won't be as strong because they're going to be, like right now, Blizzard is in a, uh, there are big fish in a small pond in terms of like Activision Blizzard. Blizzard's one of the three, Activision, Blizzard, and King. But if they get owned by Microsoft, they are one of many. So it could mean that there could be a little bit less stress and a little bit less stringent requirements placed on employees and placed on production and retention because there are just so many other things that carry the Xbox Game Pass and the Microsoft Game Pass and PC Game Pass besides Blizzard games already. So does this mean that it will be completely different? No, I don't think so. But what I'm talking about here is a best case scenario. Now, our best case scenarios, what to expect to happen. I think that if you've paid attention to Blizzard in the past year, you would say no. And I would probably agree with you. I think that that's, um, it's a bad thing. Wow on consoles, finally. I've always been, I've always been a, um, an advocate for this. I actually hope that they do bring World of Warcraft to a console. I hope that they do bring it to, uh, to, to mobile. Like, I mean, obviously not like uh, Battlegrounds, no. But like, there are a lot of things that you can do on a mobile, uh, on like a, on a phone, that you can easily just port over, especially like smaller systems, solo gameplay, etc. Uh, it would just take a little bit of, uh, of ingenuity. Now, I, I know how people are saying that this is such a bad thing, but why is it that Final Fantasy is able to do it on, on console? Why is it that uh, they were able to have different... Like, why is there not a pet battle uh, phone app? Why, why? Why is there not a pet battle phone app? There's no reason. There's really no reason why there's not a pet, pet battle phone app. Uh, ESO does it as well. Yeah, it's like all of these people, it's like they hear phone game and they're like, oh my God, it's going to be like Genshin Impact and you have to pay like $10,000 to get a sword. It's, no, like it's just different elements of the game like wow is such a fragmented game wow has so many different avenues that you can do things it's like you can go around and you can uh you can do pet battles you can do world quests you can do pvp you can do your maw daily or your fucking kyrian assault uh, or whatever it is what i'm saying here is that there are a lot of elements in world of warcraft that can be ported over to being a phone app I think that it's going to be the exact fucking same as it is now. And you know what an example of that is? Fishing, number one. And number two, what I'm doing right now. Like, everything in my Covenant Sanctum here can easily just be put onto a fucking menu on a phone. And if people would prefer to use that, I think that's a good thing. This is a phone game already. So I'm not... Yeah, it's already a fucking phone game. So don't categorically write off phone games and don't categorically write off mobile support because it's not good for the game. It's reductive. The truth is that there are a lot of ways that phone uh, integration, mobile integration, and also more so console integration can make the, uh, make the horizons for the game larger and wider rather than smaller. Because I think that trying to keep it to being a PC game only and not even trying or thinking about console or mobile integration, it's just a 2010 way of thinking. And I'd prefer to, uh, to look towards the future. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it when I believe it. Okay, well then look at Final Fantasy or, or, or fi fi didn't literally just go look at another mobile game. Like, I, they're, they're <laughs> look at ESO. Yeah, yeah, OSRS. It's so weird to me that this this is such a point of contention when there are already success examples of what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not proposing something that's unheard of. I'm proposing something that is not only well heard of, very well heard of, but also is successful for other games. So anyway, let's go back over. We're going to read some of the comments on this and some of the other opinions. But before that, I do want to kind of wrap up what I think this is going to be for uh for wow for diablo etc uh, i think this is going to be just more business as usual with a larger the game is being cast out into a larger net i think this will increase the amount of world of warcraft players 
I, I do think so, because you're going to probably have a World of Warcraft subscription added into an Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I think that's probably what will happen, because it seems unlikely that they'll want people to pay for an Xbox Game Pass, and then on top of that, pay for a World of Warcraft subscription. So hopefully that's what happens. Uh, if it is, then I think that would be amazing. That would be incredible. Uh, obviously, though, there would be people that paid for both, and uh, that's money that they wouldn't make. So, like, is it worth it for Microsoft to do this or not? Uh, I don't know. Like, my, uh, I, I, like, obviously, I know some stuff about, like, business and accounting and shit, but, like, I have no idea what these numbers are like, and I'm sure that Microsoft will make the most financially lucrative decision with this. So, hopefully, that's what's also in the best interest of the players. It's hard to say. With Overwatch, I think you could probably easily see Overwatch moving over to... Uh, I think Overwatch is already on Xbox. And you'll probably also see a little bit less of the um, of like the drama stuff happen. Because I just think Microsoft won't put up with it. I think Microsoft is the kind of company that if like a department was like having problems and there was like weird stuff like this, they would just call in the Microsoft Xbox... Uh, uh, executives or basically the hitmen in that company and just have them fucking fire everybody and rehire completely new people if there was something like this happening like and, and that's really just the truth like they would just not fucking put up with it and you can say that that's it's a bad thing and a good thing right in, in a way it's good in a way it's bad so um i just hope that it'll be used in the right way yeah they're also getting mlg yeah for sure microsoft doesn't fuck around yeah they don't fuck around man like, they're not going to deal with, like, people stealing breast milk. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you if this shit happened and, like, Microsoft was owning the company, every single person that was even involved in that would just be fucking fired. And, like, yeah, it sucks for them because, like, maybe it wasn't everybody's fault. They don't give a fuck, okay? So, you were probably going to have a whole lot less scandals, which isn't that good for me because that means it's less videos. But I'm sure there'll still be things that slip through the cracks because, uh... Uh, Blizzard people love to talk about uh, talk about stupid shit on Twitter, and so like I can always make uh, make videos about that. So yeah, aren't you afraid that there could be some monopolistic practices, such as keeping Call of Duty from other platforms that are not Microsoft? Um, the the thing is like I'm a PC gamer, right? I'm primarily a PC gamer. I mean, fuck, I play Dark Souls on a keyboard and mouse. All right, so I'm actually really glad that like one thing that earned my trust in Microsoft and Xbox, and this is like, I, I know this might sound crazy, right? But one thing that really earned my trust is the fact that you can play Halo Infinite on PC. Like, I thought they were going to hold Halo Infinite back from PC, and they were going to make you have to uh, hold it back from PC and make you have to buy an Xbox. I, I thought for sure that's what was going to happen, because that's what uh, Sony did with uh, Bloodborne, and that's what they've done with Demon's Souls Remake as well. So, and also Master Chief Collection, etc. Like, you can play all that stuff on PC. So, like, it's a small thing, and to be honest with you, I probably trust Sony a little bit more than I trust Xbox, based off of what happened. Remember back whenever Xbox wanted you to, like, always be connected to the internet, and, like, they wanted to, like, force you to have a webcam? Like, that always, like, really, th that rubbed me the wrong way, like, really bad, back in, like, the PS4, uh, Xbox One era. So, like, yeah, I, I never really liked that, and it's going to take a long time for me to kind of, like, move past that, but Xbox is making it easier for me to move past that, and I mean, again, you should never categorically trust a multi-billion dollar company to do anything else except for try to make money, especially Microsoft, right? And sure, but, like, you could extend that to Square Enix, you could extend that to uh, Activision Blizzard, you could extend that to any of these companies. So I think that try to just take things as they come. Uh, I'm going to try to approach this with an open mind and not necessarily just completely shit on it, but I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, I am. And also like to contextualize all of this, I think the merger is going to happen or the acquisition is going to happen in it was like june or something like that 2023 so we're talking like 18 months out so this isn't going to happen like next month or you know in six months or something like that uh yeah this is an 18 month thing so that's the way i feel about it
It's not going to happen overnight, and it'll probably be a slow transition. It's way too much money being made from selling COD on all platforms than to just use it as an Xbox exclusive, in my opinion. And, and that's a good uh, that's a good insight as well, because like Call of Duty, like the games that you really see, see like let's actually talk about this just really quickly, right? I hate console exclusives. Uh, I think everybody does who doesn't like it just sucks right like i had to buy a ps5 to play demon souls remake uh, it's fucking annoying like console exclusives are not good for the customer uh it's only good for the uh, developers and the publishers so why would we as customers like it there's no reason to so anyway the reason why demon souls is so good as a uh, as a console like exclusive game is because there's no microtransactions with it. But with Call of Duty, like what you're really doing with a game that has a lot of microtransactions is you want to get that game as many people's hands as possible because you're not really making money off of the uh, off of selling the game itself. You're making money off of selling the microtransactions. That's where the real money is. I mean, if it wasn't, every game wouldn't be doing it. So for a game that's primarily built around microtransactions, it's going to be much more common to see people, uh, to see that game proliferated everywhere, like on mobile, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, uh, everywhere, because they want to get as many people playing that game to get as many chances of selling those microtransactions, right? It's just what makes sense. So, um... Like a game like God of War, a game like Bloodborne, a game like Demon Souls Remake, uh, you know, I, I can go on and on, but mainly like heavily single player games that don't have microtransactions, those are going to be the main ones that you see as console exclusives because you don't have that added profit incentive to kick that game in front of as many people as possible. Uh, to sell microtransactions. So um, I don't think that's going to happen with Call of Duty or really any of the Blizzard games. So uh, that's that's a positive. And also, like, Xbox has, again, like, they've, they've been very committed to pretty much having every single thing that's on Xbox Game Pass playable on PC. And again, uh, they earned a lot of trust with the fact that they did that with Halo Infinite. And they didn't make me buy an Xbox for that. So uh, I I'm going to try to approach this with an open mind and uh, hopefully a uh, optimistic perspective. You think WoW might go free to play now? Uh, it's very unlikely that WoW will go free to play. I think WoW will probably be included in the Xbox Game Pass. That's what I would expect. Look at Sony stocks, what the fuck? Yeah, it went down. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, because like the thing is that uh, this is a huge benefit for, uh, for Microsoft. This is a massive fucking benefit for, uh, for Microsoft, man. It's always good to have you back. О, господи, привет, друзья, с вами Аркадий, это второй канал, и я врываюсь к вам буквально с двух ног на порог, так сказать, чтобы обсудить эту новость легендарную. О ней будут говорить в ближайшие дни все вообще. Ради нее теперь проснулись блогеры-вододелы и готовы заливать новые галлоны этой святой жидкости. Ради нее, в конце концов, я сегодня прервал стрим, чтобы пойти к вам. В общем, Microsoft купила Activision Blizzard. Это что получается? Теперь это Microsoft Activision Blizzard? И знаете, сейчас, мне кажется, должны проснуться от зимней спячки вот те самые люди, которые плели конспирологические теории по поводу того, что вот эти вот скандалы все близовские в последнее время, они неспроста, неспроста. Дело в том, что кто-то подрывает им репутацию извне, чтобы потом купить их подешевле. И внезапно их покупает Microsoft. Так что сторонники вот тех теорий ликуйте. Вы нашли этого Мариарти, этого злодея. Я вам его даже сейчас покажу. Вот он, вот он, вот он тот самый многоходовочник. 
И знаете, из всех возможных вот этих вот вариантов, из всех параллельных вселенных, я бы никогда не подумал, что именно Microsoft отважится на такую грандиозную сделку. Давным-давно, видите, блуждали слухи, что Disney собирается купить себе Activision Blizzard. А тут Microsoft! Ставь лайк, если открыл этот видос, чтобы пошутить, что у Орка теперь новое начальство. И по-хорошему эту новость, конечно же, нужно обсуждать не прямо сейчас, а в идеале, конечно, с холодной головой, но вот так вот на горячую, на эмоциях, я думаю, тоже будет достаточно интересно. Что вообще происходит? Что? 70 миллиардов долларов отвалили Microsoft за покупку Activision Blizzard, если это, конечно, вам интересно, но можно здесь заметить, что подобные сделки, как правило, так быстро не протекают. И подобная сделка, как сообщается, вступит в силу где-то вот около лета 2023-го. То есть, конечно, 2022-й нам еще придется пересидеть, так сказать, с Activision Blizzard и их фирменным почерком за последние годы фирменным. И только потом мы уже сможем с вами почувствовать влияние руки Фила. Более того, мы с вами уже могли почувствовать влияние Фила Спенсера после того, как Microsoft купили себе Zenimax, в который входят беседа. И, конечно, и тогда все очень в захлеб радовались этой новости, потому что Microsoft действительно способны предоставить какие-то грандиозные условия для игровой компании. Но, тем не менее, на данный момент можно сказать, что какого-то прям влияния на беседе не ощущается. То есть, ничего особо пока важного не произошло, мы еще не знаем, что э, делает Фил Спенсер после покупки таких огромных компаний. Как вообще это все воспринимать? Типа, The Elder Scrolls 6 же не вышел, да? Кстати, если вы смотрите этот ролик в 2050-м, вы плюсаните, вышел или все еще нет. Но одновременно с этим не признать, что господин Фил Спенсер в очень правильном и хорошем направлении ведет Xbox невозможно. И есть такая вероятность, что ведет он его к монополии, конечно, но это уже дела будущих поколений. Меня больше всего в этой сделке удивляет то, что вроде как Activision Blizzard являлись так или иначе одной из крупнейших компаний на рынке, которые могли позволить себе сам издат, так сказать, и внезапно они от этой вот возможности отказались. Теперь они принадлежат другому издателю игр. Хотя вроде как в свое время сами пытались себе вот эту вот независимость привить. И еще следует отметить, что купив Activision Blizzard, Фил Спенсер получил не только Activision и Blizzard, не только Call of Duty и, например, World of Warcraft, но также и издательство King, которое занимается мобильными играми, а с мобилками у Microsoft на данный момент ничего такого уж прям не представлено мощного. А теперь у них будет, ну, кандикат Раш хоть этот вот. Ну и Diablo Immortal там еще выйти планирует. И, конечно же, акции уже улетели в небо. Все сейчас говорят об этой новости с восторгом и радостью. И даже я э, в трепете определенном нахожусь, потому что, ну, это действительно выглядит так, как будто сейчас у Activision Blizzard, который нас особо не радовали последние пару лет, появился шанс встать на какие-то другие рельсы и кардинально поменять процесс. Вернее, подход. Ну и в конце концов, это на данный момент самая дорогая сделка по компьютерным играм вообще. Но даже если представить себе, что ничего особо не произойдет с Activision Blizzard, и эта покупка никак не улучшит их какие-то там внутренние процессы, тем не менее для нас, игроков, это все еще достаточно интересная новость, потому что теперь игры Activision Blizzard попадут в Game Pass. А святой Game Pass это именно то, что должен, ну, наверное, рано или поздно испить каждый геймер, и в этой подписки содержится гигантское количество AAA игр, а теперь туда еще попадают и Call of Duty, и Diablo, и, и WoW, возможно. Здесь, кстати, есть один небольшой, но интересный нюанс. Дело в том, что подписку на WoW мы платим в рублях, а Microsoft, они не особо любят региональные цены в России. Когда они убрали отсюда свое представительство, теперь мы вынуждены покупать все игры в Microsoft магазине, даже Windows Microsoft магазине и подписку за доллары. То есть любая AAA игра, которая продается сейчас в Microsoft Store, стоит вот именно то количество денег, что она стоит в Америке. То есть там 60 долларов, например. А будем честны, подписка WoW хоть и подорожала и теперь составляет там 650 рублей, тем не менее она относительно дешевая на фоне вот долларового эквивалента. И вот это меня чуть-чуть немножко напрягает. Вот мало ли подписка станет теперь 15 долларов или сколько она там и это будет уже, конечно, другого масштаба и птица-то, птица. 
Ну, вообще, знаете, если вот пессимистичный, так сказать, взгляд отбросить, то какой вообще перед нами открывается простор интересных мыслей и буквально сплетается вот этот вот фанфик по Activision Blizzard Microsoft и как они хорошо друг с другом ладят, как Фил Спенсер управляет, как дирижер этими студиями, вот. И можно, например, пофантазировать, что может произойти в таком тандеме, но сперва отметим, что Близов есть на ближайший год. Overwatch 2 я практически на 100% процентов уверен выйдет в 2022 и это в принципе все что у близов есть на этот год кроме Diablo Immortal которая тоже выйдет в 2022 ну понятное дело обновление ход с Hearthstone не берем сюда максимум еще произойдет анонс следующего дополнения для World of Warcraft и то не факт а теперь к помечтажкам и вот что я бы выделил из каких-то возможных вероятных стечений обстоятельств но конечно не все здесь прям э, может произойти но тем не менее Heroes of the Storm игра, которая находится сейчас в кризисе. Возможно, ее немножко из него выведут, потому что, например, консоли у нас имеются, да, на консолях нормальных моб не существует, в принципе, если ход перенесут на консоль, войнот. Ну или закроют, скорее всего, закроют. Еще, чтобы я выделил из списка вот этих вот влажных мечтаний, так это выход World of Warcraft на консоли Xbox, потому что, в принципе, в World of Warcraft с последним дополнением немножко обкатывались там, и возможность управления игрой на геймпаде и какие-то другие консольные функции. Давным-давно существует экшен камера которая очень неплохо смотрится именно на консолях. И в принципе представьте, какая была бы ответочка. Вот у Sony есть Final Fantasy 14, да, на их консоли. А у Xbox будет World of Warcraft. Я понимаю, конечно, что сейчас после ухода с Монголда публичного, все говорят, что Final Fantasy 14, ну она-то круче намного, но тем не менее. Вы представляете, какая аудитория будет Волта Фаркрафтеров, если еще к ним присоединятся консольщики. Это, конечно, еще стоит очень глобально, наверное, игру-то переработать, но будем надеяться, что как раз Shadowlands окончится неким э, хаосом в конце и перезапуском определенным, в который очень хорошо бы вписалась возможность выхода Волта Фаркрафта на Xbox. Ах да, у Microsoft же теперь получается практически две самые популярные PvE-ориентированные MMORPG, 